Hello and welcome to Frank's School, 7th year, 113th day, first video. And here I will show you a plan for a new crown. Now there's a kind of a pun on the plan because I don't just mean uh, what I plan to do. I mean a, a plan looking down. Uh, when, you, when an architect does drawings, there's a plan and there's elevations. There's a front elevation, side elevation, and a plan. And then a perspective, which can be uh, uh, developed from those. Uh, and the crown is, uh, I, I guess, I may just call it the crown, w once again. Uh, I talked about that in the last video. Now this could be pretty ugly because I can't draw, but, uh, but I think I can show you. But first of all, I wanted to say that yesterday I did not get the water to the aqueduct, not quite. But I'm gaining about <clears throat> at least 50 yards a day, and I've only got about 50 yards to go. And last night, for all I know, the water might have made it that far. Uh, I'm having to rake the leaves out of the uh, the bis. Uh, you know, there's I, I haven't had that actually running I, I possibly in four years that far, and so there's quite a bit of raking to do. Uh, but uh, I, th I think I'll, I'll make it there. All right, uh, I want to tell you what the legacy was left after I cleaned the whole hilltop off. It, it, all there was was a little bit of piece of uh, sheet metal and two black snakes under it. But uh, what was, was there that you didn't see? were 16, well the moot point, right in the center of the top of the hill. It took some, uh, it was a bit of a challenge to find out where that was because the hill gets uh, kind of flat. And the other thing is this was all mined and bulldozed and, and so the top is not smooth. It's, it's in Portuguese they call it accidentada. It's, it's rough, it's, it's, not, it's not normal. But anyway, there's the moot point. Uh, I had driven a stake uh, a, a, a steel stake about that big around right in there and I thought that's going to be the point. Well there were 16 uh, spots that were made level with concrete blocks and they were still there. One got moved uh, but I, it was easy enough to find and, and here they are. Uh, there's four, four, four going around like that. That was the foundation basically for what I was going to build at the time. Uh, but, uh, and, and they're still there and they're still level. Uh, of course, they're just laid on the ground, but that's one of the things that, <laughs> that uh, builders have basically been ignoring. They are, you know, are forced to. You think, oh, you've got to dig down below the frost line and pour concrete stuff. That's nonsense. It's just, it's just floating. Uh, and it will be, and it was. Uh, although you might say, well, it wouldn't have blown down if you had concrete down there and anchor bolts. And, well, that's maybe true. Probably not. Uh, anyway, uh, there, there were those 16 spots r right there. And um, so I figured they were useful. Now, at the time that I laid them out, I laid them out not square because I had laid it out in a way that I wanted to be able to drive through in, in four directions to drive right, right through that area. My goal now is quite the opposite. I want to stop the wind from blowing through there. and. Uh, and I, with the first eight, uh, I may not be able to do that. Well, I think I will be able to do that completely. But anyway, they were there. But to them, I had to um, add, I've had to add uh, 16 more because they were not square. So, and here, this represents the, the, the four per hut that I had to add, you know, with, with concrete blocks. A limiting factor was that my uh, forbefores that I have plenty of uh, enough to do all this, no problem. Uh, they uh, needed to bear on on the. What I did was I, I put uh, forbefores like that and forbefores like that. Uh, and so where should this be? Well, the limiting factor was that the uh, the, the forbefores that were then going to go like this, uh, which is one, the ones the palace will lay on are about eight foot long, they're eight foot long. And, and so they needed to bear on that and bear out here <coughs> on something. So where was that spot, gonna, where were those spots gonna be? Uh, now the other ones at the back, I used two of them because uh, to get the 12 feet. And the, the ones that, the, so, so I, I have to catch it. I haven't got those leveled up yet, but I do these. Uh, so where should they be? Well, I had made a drawing, <laughs> I actually, made a drawing and I'll show it to you in, at the end of this uh, to calculate that out because I didn't want the roofs to touch. This would be the roof line 
and, and the roofs, uh, it, uh, at the gable end, the roofs go out two feet, on a, and on the eaves, uh, the, the roofs overhang two feet. And I didn't want them to touch, because by code, well, not by code, but, but by permits, it, it, if these are independent buildings, and they're less than 100 square feet. You don't have to. No code applies. No, no, no. They're not even taxed, um, uh, and no, no permits. None. You can just build whatever you want as long as they're less than 100 square feet. Well, this 12 by 8, approximately, is actually 12 foot 5 inches by 8 uh, foot is less than 100 square feet, and so I can have eight of them uh, without the permits, without the taxes. With, uh, but I didn't. I wanted to make sure they didn't touch. Now, the way I've drawn this, they would touch. Uh, but, but I had to know how far apart do they have to be so that they don't quite touch. And from the drawing that I made, I came up with 18 foot from the moot point. 18 foot to there. Then I had to, uh, and, and so I got that distance, but then I had to, I used a, a framing square laid in here to, to approximately get this uh, square. Uh, and, and I did that the whole way around. And, and, uh, and, then, and then I saw, okay, now how close does it come to the one beside it? And I'd come up with my drawings at six foot. The, the corners of the focus have to be six foot apart. And with that, that would leave the roof line, <coughs> the roof corners approximately. The, these, these are approximate. Yeah, all of them are approximate, but it gave me a ballpark. They, they would be about a foot apart, which I thought, okay, that gives me enough play that if I don't get it quite right, uh, and, and, uh, and they still won't touch. So that, that's been fun work, really, a lot of moving around. Then I did it, I, I looped it over the stake at the moot point and measured them. And, and I also had to, I, actually I could trust my earlier work. This work was pretty good, uh, and so I could pretty much work off it. But I wanted to make sure, too, that that it was right over the center, <laughs> and that they, uh, yeah, and, and uh, I, tomorrow I think I'll, it will be the day I'll show you a video that'll that'll show me doing some of this stuff. Um, all right, so I, I've done that. Uh, one foot, and part part of the reason I write this down is because uh, my my friend Matthew Zubek, who did the architectural drawings for my book. Uh, uh, building Focus with Palettes, a new vernacular architecture, the book we did together. He can now take his drawing and he can he can do this and it, it would it, in perspective and everything, which would be kind of exciting. So if he sees this, he'll be able to do that. All right, now the only other thing I'm going to do right now is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but this is the drawing that I made. Uh, you almost certainly can't see it from there. This is the drawing I made to get those dimensions. There's the move point. There are the eight uh, faux cuts, and uh, and I, I was pretty careful with that. The thing is, I draw very lightly. Where maybe what I'll do here is uh, I'll say bye for now, but then I'll pick the camera up and I'll bring it over. That might be easier for you to sh see what I've done. So bye for now. <coughs>